So welcome to today's Trend Signal Trading Podcast. It's the 3rd of February 2020 and there is an awful lot to get through as the stock markets continue to plunge from the coronavirus. So um, this podcast is really a lively run through of what's going on with the markets, what to look out for and how one can improve on one's own trading. So my name is Adrian Boothy. I've been the head of trading here at Trends, Trend Signal since 2004 and you're stuck with me alone today I'm afraid to say. Uh, Jerry's over in Australia taking a bit of R&R. Um, so it'll be just me going through the markets, going through everything today. So we're going to do our usual run through of what to look out for, what to look out for for the week ahead, what's been happening. Um, we'll be looking through some markets, looking at some support and resistance levels, look for the trends that are going to be uh, coming into play uh, for the next uh, week or so. And also in our defining trading section, we're going to define what a bear market is. It is a term that's thrown around there a lot just because the market's falling. We're going to get into the definition of that just to make sure we're actually using that term properly. Um, so look, let's get into it. And we'll start off with what do we know? Uh, well, this is really when we go through a run through uh, of what's happened over the last sort of seven days, really since our last podcast. Uh, and we were talking about the markets there. And really, uh, it's all about the coronavirus, uh, to be honest with you. Massive moves uh, on those US indices in particular. Uh, we're going to talk about those in a second. Um Otherwise, um, we'll be look, talking about a few other things as well. For example, China pretty much closed all of last week because of the Chinese New Year. Um, so now that the stock market's all opened up uh, after the New Year celebration, some big moves uh, on the China market as well. So over the past week, uh, the infection rate of the coronavirus or Wu flu, uh, as it's called in Hong Kong, has accelerated. And the number of infections is climbing daily and it's now standing in excess of 14,000 with fatalities also tracking higher in line as well. So Chinese markets have got to play catch up. Uh, so not surprising to see the sharp falls similar to those witnessed last week on the Hang Seng in Hong Kong. Outside of China and Hong Kong, uh, global stock markets also had a turbulent week with every major stock index notching up uh, the biggest losses since last October. Let's have a quick look at a few of the charts um, and we can see uh, the Dow on screen here. It's a massive sell off uh, after we got that sell signal on the, what was that, the 23rd of Jan. And here we are, uh, some, uh, uh, well, it's fallen, but best part of a thousand points really on the Dow really since then. So significant moves down. Uh, overall, uh, the Dow Jones uh, finishing last week down 733 points. That's 2.5%. Uh, and the S&P 500, the broader index of the biggest 500 stocks by market cap, uh, that was down 70 points. Uh, it doesn't sound a lot, does it? 70 points, 70 big points. Uh, that's down 2.12%. So effectively, the value of the biggest 500 companies in the US uh, fell by 2.12% just from last week. And that's despite some positive uh, Q4 results uh, from the likes of Apple uh, and Amazon as well. So uh, some big moves, the likes of the FTSE, that fell about 4% there. But of course, it's going to for a number of reasons, the main of which being it's got a very heavy resources sector. If you look at markets like copper, that's got absolutely battered uh, over the last week or so, uh, or last couple of weeks, to be honest with you, copper, which is really a bit of a bellwether for the state of the Chinese economy, fell very sharply indeed. In fact, why don't we have a quick look uh, at copper and just zoom into there. There was a sell there um, a few weeks ago now, but just continuing to scythe off uh, down about 12% off those highs over the past 12 days as traders fear a big slowdown in growth uh, in China as well. So those precious metals, uh, the resource sto uh, stocks as well, those are the ones that are taking a big uh, hit there. So in the UK, companies like Rio Tinto, BHP Billiton, oil companies uh, have been uh, suffering from significant falls as commodities slumped in the wake of the Chinese lockdown. Uh, precious metals less so. Remember, we talk about risk on, risk off. So if we're taking risk off our portfolio, uh, in other words, taking getting out of those higher risk stocks, getting out of stocks generally, people are going to be moving into safer assets. It could be the dollar, could be gold, that sort of uh, thing uh, there. So um, 
In fact, if you look at gold, didn't really do much last week at all. It sort of held its own uh, as much as anything else. So crude oil, Brent crude down 6.4% last week. Uh, NYMEX crude down 4.95%. That's about $2.7. Uh, gold was up 1.3%. Copper down 6.3%. And we can also see in terms of some of the uh, currency markets, excuse my uh, my nose, I've got a bit of a cold uh, going on at the moment. So I might sniff from time to time, my apologies. Um, but you can also look at some of the Austra Australian uh, markets as well. So the Australian dollar taking also a bit of a hip, a very resource uh, driven um, uh, 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 economy, lots of resources being exported to China and so on. So that's going to be directly impacted by uh, what's going on with China. We've seen uh, the Australian dollar take a bit of a bath over the last few weeks. Australian dollar against the US dollar that you're seeing on screen there. So gone from uh, where was the last sell uh, back at uh, the 17th of Jan. And here we are, uh, what, a couple of hundred points lower. And that's quite a big move, a couple of hundred points. It doesn't sound a lot. But that's quite a big move for the likes of the Australian dollar down 139 points last week. That's down 2%. Dollar CAD, again, Resources uh, heavy, the Canadians, uh, Canadian dollar, uh, that was down 85, around 0.65% uh, there. Um, the coronavirus really is going to continue to dominate the headlines because it has that global sort of reach to it. It's not just about what's happening in China. China is a huge consumer, so it's going to impact those other resource heavy uh, sectors and resource heavy currencies. As I said, the likes of the mining stocks, the likes of the, co the precious metal sort of commodities uh, that are there, perhaps not gold, but maybe the other sort of more utilized uh, commodities like copper. And like I said, uh, economies like Australia, and Canada, uh, which are quite resource heavy as well. So the impact is uh, quite far reaching. Um, and whilst it's not known, not enough is known really about the transmission and the infection rates at the moment uh, for the coronavirus, it is going to have a big impact uh, for us. And for now, markets remain very on edge as a number of countries close all access to China's nationals, which is at odds with um, World Health Organization guidelines, which expressly state that countries should not block China off, but improve detection and quarantining procedures. There was a strange thing I heard on the radio uh, a few days ago where um, if you're coming in from uh, Wuhan, there was somebody who came in from Wuhan and you had to put yourself under um, self-quarantine, So, which is just you know, for two weeks, which effectively means you come in, in the UK this was, you come in, you fly into the, to uh, Gatwick or whatever, Heathrow, uh, you then just drive straight home uh, and then you've got to stay in your house for two weeks. And there's some, you know, companies have been trying to help people to be able to work from home and so on. But the idea being that you can come into contact with a lot of people from the time at which you get off the plane uh, to actually getting back to your house. And that's also the, on the assumption that you'll, you will stay within your house uh, for, uh, for a couple of weeks. It's all a bit weird, uh, actually. Uh, the UK has actually since changed that policy because it was just all a bit uh, um, wishy-washy, I think, might well be the right uh, expression uh, for that. So really for now, uh, fear in the unknown is what the markets uh, see as their greatest um, problem. And fear will only subside when we know more and the infection rates slows, which does not look to be happening anytime soon. And outside of the coronavirus epidemic, the Senate, Senate trial of Donald Trump follows his impeachment in the House, uh, following the impeachment in the House of Representatives. It does look like it to be running its course at the moment. It's not, I don't think it's really having too much of an impact. I think there's a much bigger story going on. Uh, elsewhere with the coronavirus but it is very likely now uh, really following the decision not to call any more witnesses that Trump will be uh, acquitted of those charges. Over in good old blighty uh, Brexit a little something called Brexit I don't know if anyone's heard of that before but yeah it's been quite important um, we uh, exited the European Union uh, on 11 p.m. on Friday last week so uh, um, and all a bit sort of, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it also feels a little bit Y2K uh, and not really much has really happened since then. But that's because we have the withdrawal agreement in place. And now 
it's really symbolic, if nothing else, uh, that departure on Friday because the hard work really starts uh, to negotiate a trade deal with the European Union uh, by the end of the year. Um, that's when it will start the full. Uh, and at the same time, we're also going to be starting uh, formal negotiations with the US uh, for a trade deal as well. Uh, for now, not much changes as the transition period means there will be little to no difference for most citizens. Sterling uh, looks to uh, further gains against against both the euro and the dollar, although it won't be a smooth ride um, for a, a lot of the time. So there will be some turbulence, we think. Um, but for now, uh, pound looking uh, relatively strong, at least it was last week. One of the reasons uh, really for that uh, was down to the MPC's decision to keep rates on hold. Uh, this was quite interesting because if you actually look at the uh, calendar, I want to quickly bring the calendar up from last week uh, there. Let me just bring that in. Um, ooh, what are we doing? Here we go. OK, so uh, we were expected. So we had the, the votes come in. OK, uh, and I think this is one of the reasons why the pound shot up uh, the tail end of last week, Thursday last week. We can see that in the previous vote, we had two, two of the, the, the nine Makes it sound very uh, Lord of the Rings, doesn't it? Uh, two of the nine voting for a cut, uh, seven uh, looking for no change. Um, they're expecting three for a cut. There have been sort of definite um, suggestions that one of them um, had been talking about uh, more likely to vote for a cut if required. Um, that didn't come to pass. In fact, uh, that person, presumably, um, uh, then uh, actually just carried on with the original policy of a no change. So, um, so nothing really happened. And of course, um, if you're expecting three to cut and six, to remain unchanged and it comes in as two and seven uh, then it's slightly more positive uh, for the pound it makes the next rate cut slightly less likely than perhaps it was uh, before so um okay well there we go uh let's move on then shall we so uh, what don't we know yet uh, so in this section what we're going to do is take a look at what's happening for the calendar for the coming week and let's see where the, the sort of i guess the banana skins might be uh, the things that might be really impacting uh, the markets from there so let me just again uh, bring my calendar back in and let's start to go through that right now OK, so what I'm going to do is put a look at the week uh, to come um, and here you can see it really. We've got um, the sort of medium impact. I'm just going to get rid of those for now, actually, and just get just just focus on the high impact, the red ones there. Um, and you can see the sort of main events we've got. So for today. Uh, we've got the US ISM um, manufacturing PMI uh, data, um, so expecting 48.5, which is a contraction uh, from the previous um, uh, so, sort of where the status quo, if you like. Remember, 50 is basically everything stays the same, but it's slightly better than the previous uh, time there. So it was a surprisingly low lumber last time. So we're expecting a small pickup uh, really from there. And this has been important as a, as a kind of precursor to interest rate change and how well the economies are doing. So that'll be quite an important one really to uh, look out for. Um, crucially, uh, really for over in Australia, particularly a lot of movement with the US uh, Australian dollar at the moment. Sorry, um, we've got the cash rate interest rate decision there. Um, currently, uh, it's at three quarters of a percent. It's expected to remain at three quarters of a percent. Um, so uh, but it'll be interesting because pressure will mount on a cut uh, if um, there continues to be a coronavirus uh, epidemic and it continues to uh, to take control. But, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. So obviously, when you cut rates, it sort of injects a bit of sort of push uh, for people to spend. If you cut rates, your mortgages come cheaper. You've got more disposable income. There's less point having money sitting on savings. You may as well spend it against inflation and so on. So it just tends to be a, a, a stimulus uh, for the economy, which, you know, Generally, it's part of the armory to, uh, you know, move away from uh, the threat of recession to stimulate people to go out there and spend. OK, um, what we've also uh, got is the US annual State of the Union address uh, in Congress by Trump. Uh, interesting state of affairs as um, the impeached president will likely be celebrating his acquittal uh, and championing his achievements with a resurgent uh, US uh, economy as well. So that's happening uh, later on on the Tuesday. Uh, as for the Wednesday, uh, ADP non-farm employment change. So uh, we're expecting 150,000 jobs being created against 202,000. 
was in the prior month. Uh, ADP, why is this uh, useful? Uh, ADP is one of the payroll companies over in the US. So it's kind of a precursor. It's always on the Wednesday uh, before the non-farm employment change. This is a much bigger number. But this one uh, effectively gives us an idea about what the payroll company is saying uh, in terms of um, job creation, job cuts, that sort of thing. So it gives us a bit of a, an aperitif, if you like, an indication of how the non-farm payroll data may go. Um, it's a bit more volatile, so it's not perfect because it's just one of the uh, payroll companies. But it does give an interesting uh, indication uh, there. Why is employment so important in the US? Uh, employment is important everywhere, you understand, but it has a... In, bigger significance in the US compared to other uh, countries and states because um, generally speaking, a central bank has one mandate, which is to control inflation. So it uses monetary policy to control inflation. Uh, however, uh, there are two mandates for the US uh, FOMC, uh, which is Federal Open Market Committee, uh, which is number one, controlling inflation and price change, but also uh, to control employment as well. So uh, that's why non-farm employment change, other than interest rates, is probably the most important piece of data that's going to be coming out. And that's coming out on Friday with the ADP data as the sort of precursor, if you like, uh, really for that. Uh, US uh, ISM non-manufacturing PMI uh, looking to come in at 55.1. So steady reading in line with the last couple of months. Uh, the stronger the better, uh, basically, for the US dollar, uh, New Zealand dollar bank holiday uh, on Wednesday. Uh, there. Uh, on Thursday, President Lagarde uh, is speaking, uh, is due to testify about the economy and monetary policy in Brussels. It can move the euro and the stock market. So keep your pencil sharpened if you're interested in that. And that's from eight o'clock UK time um, Thursday morning there. Um, and then really on Friday, like I said, we've got uh, non-farm employment change. So this is an important. The reason it's non-farm is because farming is extremely cyclical. So they strip that out just to make it more stable. Expecting 160,000 new jobs created versus 145,000 last time. Um, unemployment rate, 3.5% against 3.5% last time. So we're not really expecting much of a change uh, like that. Hourly, average hourly earnings, a jump in this um, would unsettle the markets, uh, really. But it's not likely we'd see a jump in the US dollar if that uh, happened. Otherwise, uh, in terms of the uh, stock market uh, for the coming week, uh, quite a few. We're still in the earnings season, fourth quarter earnings season from 2019. Uh, US stocks uh, typically uh, will report quarterly. So what you've got is Ford, General Motors, Alphabet, so Google basically, and Twitter are the main sort of uh, companies coming out this week. So that could be interesting uh, for the week coming up ahead. I guess if you're going to put a, a, a number on or a fix on one important item for the week, it's going to be not going to be non-farm employment change. There's going to be some movement over there. There usually is. Uh, so just keep your pencils sh uh, sharpened. Uh, keep your powder dry and any of the metaphors coming into the number. But there could be some interesting movements after the number uh, that could keep uh, traders, um, uh, well, profitable, hopefully. Uh, OK, so next up, what should we be trading in this section? What I'd like to do is just have a look at some charts, have a look at some potential support and resistance levels and some trends and see really what's been going on and what to look out for uh, for the week ahead. You know, if you've been looking at our trade of the day videos on our YouTube channel recently, you'll see there's been some fantastic snipers against the trends some fantastic trading opportunities generally. And in terms of day trading, short term trading, our dynamic trader series, some wonderful opportunities there because the volatility is there and what it's doing is creating movement, creating opportunity, particularly on those shorter time frames as well. What I'm going to do is just dial back a little bit. Have, let's have a look at the higher time frames and let's just see what's been going on there. On the daily charts, well, look, we've got a big sell-off going on right now on those uh, stock indices. The FTSE, for example, really big sell-offs there. And that was a great sell trade. But the question is, what now? Where might we start to find support? I'm just going to go through a few support levels and sort of levels you might want to start thinking about in terms of uh, potential uh, support. Now, uh, in terms of the FTSE, we may not get down here, but we're looking around 71.63. That's the last 
support level from which the market um, hit a base back at the beginning of December last year, 2019. So we're heading back towards that level. Big movement down here. So we're having a little sniff down towards that level. So keep an eye out for that one. Uh, let's... Uh, interesting. Um, what we've also got, we can look at the likes of the DAX. Uh, similarly... Big movements down. It's just holding these previous support levels at the moment. But I can tell you, if this breaks lower, we're likely to see it move down to these sort of levels, the sort of 12, 400, something like that. So we could see a big breakdown from here, maybe even down to this sort of 11, 900. I don't think that's going to happen in a week, but it could happen over the next couple of weeks there. So keep an eye out for the support levels. When you see big falls like this, it's hugely tempting to just go in and buy the market, but it's dangerous. Make sure you stick to your rules. Don't just blindly buy a market just because it's cheap. You need reasons, criteria, stick to your trading plan because it's at times like this where you get all a bit caught up in the emotional side of it that you can start to make some really, really bad decisions. Interesting other support and resistance levels which seem to be coming into play at this point, copper. Now we've talked about copper because of the coronavirus. We talked about it when we were doing the recap of the last week. We hit a level here back from uh, what September's lows. We had a big bounce from that level there uh, and this is the first time we've gone back to that level we touched down to a low on it in friday and we've had a decent enough bounce off that level from there so we're just holding this level for now it'd be interesting to see if we get a buy opportunity off of this level so we're looking for those indicators to turn from red to green for now, though, that high grade copper looks around that sort of 251 even level seems to be really interesting uh, for copper uh, there. Otherwise, Sterling New Zealand, I've seen that come dramatically off a big resistance level uh, back from the middle of October. I love looking at these pivot points because the market hit it uh, again back in middle of December. So this is a resistance level on Sterling New Zealand around 203.67. Hit that level back in mid-December, came straight off it in a big fall carried on so what we've had is a really nice rally we talked about the rally in the pound over the last few days it's really been there um, a really big movement down in the New Zealand so it's sort of exaggerated move for the pound New Zealand so you've got rising pound and you've got a fall in New Zealand dollar means an even bigger move for sterling New Zealand we've hit a relative resistance level so we've hit it around that sort of 20367 level and we're now at 20182 we've come straight off that level and then whacked back down again so this is going to be a really interesting level from here so I'm keeping an eye on that sterling New Zealand I'm running a strategy at the moment for my own trading when I'm trading off these pivot points as so we'll talk about more about that in due course but uh, euro can as well something similar again we hit some again some nice buy trades but we came into this resistance level 146.81 back from the middle of December we nudged that level on Friday's highs and we've come quite nicely off that level as well now about sort of what 40 or 50 points or so uh, off that pivot point as well so again we're moving because we've had big movement on these markets we are being sucked towards major support major resistance levels we're seeing a lot of them down on those New Zealand pairs as well if I just bring the charts in you might have to go a little far way back actually for it uh, not New Zealand Swiss uh, CAD New Zealand Swiss though let me just tighten that up very close you see that see the pivot points here these lines one two we're very close to that 62.13, 62.14 level. It's currently trading 62.38. I'm interested in that as an area to think about a buy. Again, New Zealand yen, I'm interested in these levels, a cluster of pivot points where we had that congestion back from the end of October, early November as well. We're being sucked towards those levels. We're going to think about those areas as a potential zone to buy. New Zealand dollar, similarly, again, a lot of congestion in that end of October, early November. Look at the charts, tighten it up. Look how much we're stuck around those levels. We are now, having broken to the upside, we're now putting being sucked back towards it. Will this zone, that 64.20 on New Zealand dollar, will that become a new major support level? It might do. Let's see what the reaction is when the market comes down to those levels then. Okay, so we're keeping an eye on these markets that have had a big, big breakdown. We're keeping an eye on the New Zealand dollars, the Australian dollars. These are crucial markets that have had a lot of movement. At some point, they may snap back. But do not just buy them blindly. Make sure there are reasons for what you are doing. Uh, and, you know, look at your support and resistance. 
do your chart analysis. If you're wanting something more straightforward, that's when you should be looking to register for one of our live trading webinar events. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on and how you can book your own free place. But look, have a look at our Trade of the Day videos as well. We're always talking about these sort of levels, these sorts of trading opportunities, because let's face it, there's been some fantastic moves in this, the early part of this year already. And let's see if we can get some more over the next few weeks. But hopefully, that's a useful thing. What have we looked at there? We've looked at some foreign exchange. We've looked at some indices. We've looked at some commodities. We've done the whole whole lot, guys. So in this week's defining trading, uh, we're going to take a look at a term called a bear market, quite topical, obviously. We try to do topical definitions. We've done recently uh, the likes of the VIX because that was exploding. Um, short selling just before the US started to come off. That was quite timely. Uh, today, we're going to look at a bear market. The bear market is a term that's banded around quite a lot and actually probably misused quite a lot as well. I mean, I've seen a lot of definitions just researching it actually just today, just to just to check what companies are actually saying or websites are saying it's funny I was talking to my kids just the other day and just saying how clever Google must be because it has the knows the answers to everything I said no the answer is only as good as the information that it finds and actually Google's not the clever thing it's the information that it's finding and if you've got the wrong source it doesn't mean that the answer is going to be right and of course it's just basically a lot of them are saying well it's a falling market which is you know about as helpful as a chocolate teapot really uh, so what is a bear market the definition really of a bear market is a market that is 20 percent off from its recent highs or its highs generally uh, so uh, in terms of uh, the US market, we are nowhere near a bear market right now. Yes, they've been a bit hammered uh, and it sounds like a lot of a move uh, in points terms uh, in recent uh, weeks um, or the recent days rather. Uh, but actually, we're nowhere near off a, bell, uh, off a bear market. And let's have a quick look uh, very quickly at the charts. And don't worry if you're listening to this on SoundCloud or something. I'll be going through the numbers uh, as I go through it. So uh, we can take a quick look at the Dow. Uh, Dow had a recent high uh, from the 17th. Of Jan up at 29413. Uh, so what you're looking at is uh, really a 20% move down uh, from there. So take that number, times it by 0 0.8, and effectively you've got the definition price uh, really of a bear market, which uh, is a lot lower than here. Uh, in fact, um, you're looking at, oh, hang on, bear with me a second. If I go to 20% off there, it's going to be about 600 lower than this. It's going to take us down to even further down than this, believe it or not. Just goes to show just how much this market's been going up. It's still even lower than this. It's going to take us down to 23531. Even lower than that. There we go. 235. 31, about where my cursor is now. Look how much this market's got to fall in order to demonstrate what is defined as a 20% fall and a bear market. So we've got to go significantly lower uh, than really where we are right now. And it's the same basic picture really for the um, S&Ps as well. So that's the Dow, which is uh, a, a, an elected panel of an elected number of stocks, 30 stocks in the US uh, in terms of the, uh, the Dow, sorry, the S&Ps. We're looking at down at 2669 uh, uh, around sort of uh, where my, back sort of here where my cursor is. So you can see the amount of falls that we've had, it's probably like 4% or something ridiculous. Um, but we need to go <laughs> like significantly higher, further down, like five times more than that, in order to get down to what is really defined as a bear market. So we're a long way away. Just to give you an idea about context, talk about what a bear market is 20% off the highs how long are we actually ever in a bear market by that definition well between 2010 and 29 uh, 2019 it's a 10 year period for the US stock markets how many days were we actually in a bear market i.e so we, we we had a high we then fell 20% so from that 20% down day how many days was it where we continued to be down below 20 lower more than 20 percent off if you like uh, from those highs how many days were there in the last uh, 10 years zero days there wasn't one time in the last 10 years where we were off the u.s stock market was off by more than 20 percent in the last 10 years 2000 to 2009, however, was a little bit different. The actual bear market definition, that 20% of all, how, many, how long was it down below 20%? 
670 days so it's just under two years uh, something like that anyway just under two years of actual of that 10 year period was by definition a bear market forgetting the fact that it had fallen uh, 20% uh, already you know so it doesn't happen all that often okay it didn't happen at all over the last 10 years what do we think about a bear market going forward is this the start of one I think it's just far too early to say there is an argument that with the US presidential election coming towards the end of this year um, that actually uh, I don't think that the Republicans and Trump will be too keen on uh, anything that would help uh, push a stock market fall because it is such an important part of the US economy like any economy I suppose but you know the US in America, they do a lot of a lot of self trading. They're trading their pensions and so on, much more sophisticated than I think other other areas of the uh, of the world with people's own uh, investing or home investing and so on. It might be a bit unfair, but the point is, it will be a really bad thing to have a recession, a bear market coming in uh, into. Uh, the presidential election. So I think they'll be looking to do everything they can to stop that. Does that mean you'll get one straight afterwards, uh, straight after November? Who knows? It's a long way ahead. All I know is this. We are a long way away from a bear market right now. We're down to what, three or four percent. Uh, we are certainly down nowhere near like the 20 percent definition of what a bear market is. Uh, now, the Trend Signal podcast is not the end of where you can find out more information about trading and learn more from the Trend Signal team. And three times a week, we run our live trading webinars where we go through a couple of strategies. We'll teach you the rules for the strategy and how you can identify high quality turning points uh, from trading the Forex index and commodity markets. So if you would like to learn more, you'd like to learn a strategy and you'd like to learn three simple rules to help boost your trading get yourself booked in for one of our live upcoming online events. You can do that by visiting our short URL, which is bit.ly slash learn TS. So bit.ly, L-Y, that is bit.ly slash learn TS. And you can also dial into uh, future podcasts as well. Um, there's a number of ways in which you can do that. You can tune into the uh, live cast, which is on Mondays at three o'clock. Um, but you can also uh, watch it in various other places. We're now available to listen to on iTunes. Uh, you just got to search for the Trend Signal podcast. Search for that and you will find it. Subscribe it, like it, do whatever you got to do. Listen to it download it, whatever it is that you want. SoundCloud, you can listen to there. All of them called the Trend Signal Podcast, Spotify. And you can watch and listen on our YouTube channel as well. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like it, everything like that. You know what to do. Comment if you like. If you want me to talk about certain things in these sessions, make sure you get involved, participate, and keep the social side up. If you want to go to our website, then you can check it out on our website as well. So trend-signal.com slash trendsignal-blog. Okay, so trend hyphen signal.com slash trend signal hyphen blog okay it really rolls off the tongue doesn't it uh, okay well that's it really have a great week's trading everybody um hopefully there'll be some fantastic movements hopefully there won't be too many more people uh, getting the uh, coronavirus and hopefully there'll be some fantastic trading opportunities for everybody in the weeks to come and i'll be back with you uh, same time next week uh, for more market content all the best guys and bye-bye for now <laughs>